My name's Angelo and welcome to We Want Picks. I'm going to break down the entire UFC Vegas 71 fight card, giving you my DraftKings picks, predictions, and plays, and I'm going on vacation. So you're going to get this a day early. It is Thursday, not Friday, and we have a last minute fighter swap, which is going to work out really well for your DraftKings lineups. Before I jump in, head on over to WeWantPicks.com, become a premium member. It's only $10. Become a premium member. You're going to unlock everything. You're going to get a DraftKings optimized. You're going to get player slates. You're going to get this fantastic cheat sheet here, which will be fully populated Friday by 6 p.m. Eastern, which is going to give you their DraftKings scoring projections, the DraftKings ownership projections, and the leverage number. The leverage number is a proprietary number. It is our number. We calculate that on our own, and it helps you find spots to separate yourself from the pack while building some of these big tournament lineups. Our DraftKings ownership numbers have been the best in the industry for the last three or four events. Literally nobody, not Roto Grinders, not every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a Patreon, nobody has had better DraftKings ownership projections than us, and that's because it's not a copy-paste game. We have five or six different sources. It's not me. We got a guy behind the scenes that does all the numbers. We have five or six different sources. He takes weighted formulas, works them all together, comes up with our own number. If that stuff means something to you, then you need to check this stuff out. We also do full breakdowns and salary rankings for every single fighter and every single player pool type. And again, don't forget about the DraftKings Optimizer. This will help you build lineups. This will help you build 100 and 50 lineups if you wanted to. You come in here, you click a few buttons, and this will spit out lineups for you. You throw that into your DraftKings, and you are good to go. All of this, plus our bets, our picks, and everything else are available to you right now for only $10 a month. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member. It's $10 a month. All of this content every single week for every single event. You may say, hey, why is it only $10? I see all these other people charging way more. This is a numbers game. We have almost 2,000 premium members. We're growing like crazy. I want 10, 20, 30,000 premium members. I want this $10 to be the biggest no-brainer that has ever existed in the history of time. I'm all about volume. We're going to make this the greatest value in the world. It already is, and we're just going to keep adding on to it. Guys, we want picks.com at the top. Click become a member. That's the sales pitch. Let's go ahead. Build our lineup. Let's work through this whole card. We have a Booba card to Margamanov. He's off. Jared Gooden has stepped in, and that really helps us quite a bit. So let's go ahead, break this whole thing down. Let's go ahead and build our lineup. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. As I mentioned, Carlson Harris, his original opponent was a Booba card to Margamanov. Margamanov is gone. He's off this card. Jared Gooden is stepping up on short notice. Carlson Harris. He is coming off this loss to Rachmanov, but that aged pretty well, right? Rachmanov is an absolute beast. We know that. And it's been about a year, but Carlson Harris overall, he's a well-rounded guy. He's got wild striking, but it is dangerous. He has wild submissions. He's got good cardio. He can work forward, has solid pressure, can snatch things up. He is only $8,300, and that's what we love about DraftKings. When a fighter drops and they get a, a, the original opponent... When the fighter drops and the original person who's still on the card gets a new opponent, the salary does not change. Carlson Harris could be fighting an eight-year-old. He's still going to be only $8,300. He could be fighting Brock Lesnar and he'd only be $8,300. In this case, he's getting Jared Gooden. He's not in the slate yet, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to draft him. Jared Gooden was cut by the UFC about a year ago. He had a couple of losses. In his defense, they were quality losses to quality opponents, to Abubakar Namagamedov, Alan Jobain, and Randy Brown. But he was cut. He went to the regional scene, strung together some wins. He's stepping up on like four days' notice, not even, like three days' notice. And I just don't see that happening for Jared Gooden. He's a guy who's been finished. He's a bit chinny. He is fast. He is powerful. Carlson Harrison should Harris should absolutely get this done. I love the $8,300 price point, and there's actually a couple of fighters in this range that could really work out well for us. So that's a nice little swap. I originally liked Abubakar to win, but I wasn't going to draft him. Now we got Carlson Harris in our lineup. Then we got Bruno Silva taking on Tyson Nam. This is another interesting fight. Bruno Silva is going to be the more well-rounded fighter in this matchup. He's coming back after about two years away. He's got solid wrestling, solid submissions, okay striking. He's pretty good everywhere. He's got some power in his hands. He can get wild. 
he can be a little sloppy. He's coming off these two wins, and then again, gone for two years, and then now he's back. He's fighting Tyson Nam. Tyson Nam was another guy. He was out for over a year, came back, and just absolutely took Ode Osborne's head off. Ode went for a flying knee. Tyson Nam cracked him, put him out cold. He has insane power, and he's a pretty well-rounded guy. I think underdog-wise, Tyson Nam's probably a decent underdog on this card. I think Bruno Silva's going to win because he's the overall better fighter. He has more ways to win. But Tyson Nam is so tough. Tyson Nam is so dangerous, and he's going to be very, very live. And when you're talking about a price point like this, let's not forget, Tyson Nam opened as the favorite. He opened at a minus 150 favorite. The original odds. Las Vegas said, this guy's going to win this fight, and then it flipped. He's now a big underdog, and that's reflected here in the salary. I think Tyson Nam is a very solid underdog, and depending what you're doing with your lineup, I don't think he's a bad spat to have at all because when he wins, he freaking wins. 95, 126, 105. He puts up some very big numbers. And when he loses, he's not finished. He's very, very tough. These losses are decisions. His wins are stoppages. He's a very tough guy. $7,300 is a decent price point, which means I don't like Bruno Silva at 89 because if he wins, it'll be a decision. We got Victor Henry taking on Tony Gravely. This is another interesting spot. Victor Henry. Let's look at his two UFC fights. He's a pretty well-rounded guy. He's got creative striking. He's got some decent grappling if he needs it. And this is a tale of two different Victor Henrys. This win over Hani Barcelos was incredible. His hands got going. He defended 14 takedowns from a world-level grappler. Was it 14? I forget the number. It's something absurd like that. He defended an insane amount of takedowns against Hani Barcelos. Then he fought a Rafael Sunsau. And he was taken down twice. He was just outworked. He was taken down. He just, this is not the same guy in these fights. And that's what makes Victor Henry so hard to break down. The salaries are about even. Listen, if Victor Henry wins, he will win by stoppage. The problem is I don't know which Victor Henry is going to show up. If the Hani Barsolos Victor Henry shows up, he's going to win. He's going to win by stoppage. If the Rafael Sunsal Victor Henry shows up, he's going to be taken down. And Tony Gravy is going to put up 10 million points. Tony Gravy is $7,800. I would love a $7,300 price point on this guy. Here's the problem with, with Tony Gravely. If he loses, he doesn't typically score very well because that means he couldn't get his wrestling going. But if he wins, he gets his wrestling going. He's getting those takedowns. I mean, look at this. 11 takedowns, four takedowns, two takedowns in a loss. But 11 takedowns, he scored 128 points in that fight. This is just going to come down to, I'm not going to tell you what side to pick. I think Tony Gravely is solid money. I have him to win because I can trust him. I know what he's going to do, or at least what he's going to try to do. Victor Henry, we've got two fights to go off in the UFC, and neither one of them, they didn't look anything like each other. So I don't know what Victor Henry I'm going to get. I do know what Tony Gravely I'm going to get. I like him. I think he's going to win. I don't know if I'm going to put him in my lineup, but at $7,800, a guy that could put up these kind of numbers if he gets his wrestling going is a solid guy to consider for your lineup. So if you're on the Victor Henry side and you think his last fight was just a fluke, then throw him in here because he could probably win by stoppage. If you think that that last fight is who he is, then Tony Gravely is a phenomenal play at $7,800. Then we have Ariana Lipsky taking on J.J. Aldrich. I think J.J. Aldrich absolutely dominates this fight. I don't know if she's going to finish, though. J.J. Aldrich is a decision fighter. She's not necessarily a finisher. $9,400. It's going to be hard to spend that money in DraftKings. I get it. She's a very, very safe play. And if you're playing a cash game, right, you're doing 50-50s and double-ups. And first of all, that's my recommendation to most of you. A lot of you are going to go out there, chase that big tournament money, and go get it. We have all the tools in the world for premium members to help you do that. The rest of us, or at least a combination of them, 80% of your money should be in cash games, and then 20% should be chasing that big tournament money. The cash games do single entry 50 50s or double ups if you're watching this video you are already putting in more research than most people and if you have the tools available to you for premium you are absolutely 100 percent without a doubt better than half the people competing in 50 50s and double ups and that's all you need to do is be better than half so i like jj aldrich to win this fight and if i'm in a 50 50 or double up i just need wins i just need numbers on the board i need wins jj aldrich is probably okay at 9400 dollars in the big tournament play 
Well, let's use the optimizer. Let that make some decisions for us. So J.J. Aldrich, solid everywhere. She took down Aaron Blanchfield twice. She defended all four of Aaron Blanchfield's takedowns. She's fighting Ariana Lipsky. Ariana Lipsky's a fast technical striker. She's got good grappling when she can initiate. When she cannot initiate, she gets taken down, she gets bullied, and she can struggle. I think J.J. Aldrich takes her down, bullies her, beats her up. Probably a decision, but we may, we may get a bunch of takedowns, a bunch of control time here. I'm fading Ariana Lipsky. Obviously, she's had some moments where she looked good. She's got some very... Very slick striking, but she just can't seem to get it going lately. And J.J. Aldrich, also is a good striker, can also get her wrestling going and just take those tools away from Ariana. So J.J. Aldrich, for a cash game, probably safe because you just need those wins. You need numbers on the board. But she is expensive at $9,400. Then we got Mario Batista and Guido Canetti. Mario Batista, bleh, bleh, bleh. Mario Batista should absolutely be in your lineup. $9,700 is a ton of money to spend. But this card is not last week's card. UFC 285. We had some people we were 100% sure we're going to win. And we're going to win by finish. That is not this week outside of Mario Batista. Mario Batista is the closest thing to a guarantee you're going to get on this card. He should be in your lineup. That is a very steep price point. But the price points are reflective of two things. One, that person in that specific matchup. And two, the rest of the card. They recognize... Based on the rest of this card, Mario Batista is going to dominate. We need to you know, put up some huge numbers, probably the most on the card. We need to make him expensive so that every single person doesn't have him. He should be in your lineup. He should be the base of your lineup. He's fighting a, he's very well rounded. He's got slick submissions. He's got solid striking. Don't even strike. Just work to the ground. Work those submissions. He's fighting a 43-year-old striker who I can't, there he is. He's fighting a 43-year-old striker who, yes, is riding a two-fight win streak, but Chris Motino is literally a punching bag. And I like Costa. Randy Costa's a solid guy. He has some decent wins, some competitive fights, and this win by submission is a little misleading. It just sort of fell into it, worked its way that like that. So don't look at the two two wins in a row and be like, wow, Guido Kennedy can get the ton. He's a 43-year-old striker. He has... Definitely seen better days while he's tough, while he's competitive. Mario Batista should get it done and should get it done inside the distance. Then we got Cedric Dumas taking on Josh Freem. Listen, Cedric Dumas, this is his first official UFC fight. He is a notorious street fighter, but don't let that like jade your opinion of him. He's a technical striker. He's got solid takedowns. He's got technical jujitsu. He's very well-rounded. He can win this fight absolutely anywhere. $8,800 is a very good price for him. My only concern is he, it is a UFC debut, and we just never know sometimes with these UFC debuts. But Cedric Dumas is very good and can absolutely win this fight anywhere he wants to. He's fighting Josh Freem. Josh Freem is a grappler for the most part. He's athletic. He's got some sneaky power in his punches. When he can initiate the grappling exchanges, he has success. But when he can't, he can sort of, you know... Uh, flounder a bit. When you push a grappling game plan on him, he can struggle with that. Trayson Gord took him down a couple of times, ultimately submitted him. The Hernandez fight, similar story. He was sort of pushed around. He was a step behind. Couldn't really get that done. Josh Freem is an athletic guy. I would not call him a busted prospect just yet, but this fight is set up to give Cedric Dumas a nice win because the UFC loves this guy. And they want him to be a big deal. So I'm on that train as well. Cedric Dumas, $8,800. He probably covers that. Again, if you're not comfortable with a UFC debut, then leave that alone. We got Rafael Asuncao taking on Davey Grant. Rafael Asuncao, $7,700. And this is just so tricky. Because he's very good. He's very good. He's been fighting for 20 years. He has fought the highest level of competition over that 20 years. I mean, look at his losses. Ricky Simone, Cody Garbrandt. Corey Sanhagen, Marlon Marias. These are quality losses to quality people. And look at the dates. Don't just be, oh, Cody Garbrandt's training. Well, in 2020, that dude was solid as shit. Corey Sanhagen, 2019, Marlon Marias. 2019, Marlon Marias was a beast. He beat Rob Font. He beat Benito Lopez. He's got some solid wins, including Aljamain Sterling, Marlon Marias. And that's what makes this so tricky because he's old. He's not young. He's 40 years old. He is a grappler, but he just absolutely worked Victor Henry. And he's the underdog in this matchup. And he's fighting Davy Grant. Davy Grant's not great. Decent everywhere, but he's not like this great killer. Davy Grant also 
is, you know, has his uh, weak points, if you will. Yana has smoked him. Vera smoked him. He does have a couple of wins in here, but his wins don't even compare to Rafael Sunsound's wins and the level of, uh, you know, the quality, the level of opponent that he has fought. With that being said, Davy Grant's got some power in his hands. He should be able to defend the takedowns. He is not a 40-year-old man. Davy Grant should get this done. $8,500 price point. That's a nice midway price point. But I know a lot of you guys are talking about Davy Grant runs a restaurant. He doesn't care about fighting. A lot of people are on a Rafael Sunsau. If you are in that camp, then thank the stars. You got him at $7,700. That is incredible value for a guy with that resume and that experience. I think Davy Grant wins. I am not confident enough to spend the $8,500 on him. If you are, great. And if you like a Sun Sal, he could do really well. Look what he just did to Victor Henry. He was a massive underdog in that Victor Henry fight. And he got that done at a very solid price point. Then we got a couple of heavyweights. We got Lucas Bretsky taking on Carl Williams. Lucas Bretsky. You're going to see this loss here against Martin Bidet. He beat the shit out of Martin Bidet. That was a bad decision. That was a bad decision. He absolutely doubled his strikes. He had control time. Like, he beat him. That was just a bad decision. Lucas Bresky is a well-rounded guy. He's got solid power, solid speed, decent takedowns, nice kicks. He's athletic. He'll work in spinning attacks. And if he stays in your face, he does a hell, he does a hell of a job. If you can back him up, he starts to get a little, little squirrely. But Lucas Bresky is well-rounded, very good. $7,200 is a good price point for somebody like him. He is fighting Carl Williams. Carl Williams make his official UFC debut. He's a powerful striker. He is always looking to send that right hand. They're a little telegraphed, but he's always looking to send it. He's also very, very patient. You're going to see more than one fight where he had his opponents on the ropes. On the ropes. Almost dead to rights. They weren't going down. He said, let me back up. I'll reset. I'll get this. No reason to rush. Very composed. And he has some nice, nice takedowns and some takedown defense. He's coming off a win on the Contender Series where he absolutely had no issues with a very, very high-level wrestler. No issues at all. I like Lucas Bretzky to win this fight. I'm not betting on it. It is heavyweights. I'm probably not going to put him in my DraftKings lineup either because this is heavyweights. Carter Williams has power. We've seen him do well against wrestlers. Lucas Bretzky has the better striking. He's more well-rounded. But could he be held down the whole time? Sure. Could he be the one pushing the striking pace, staying in Carl's face, avoiding that telegraphed right hand? Sure. I'm going to leave this fight alone. It is heavyweights. One of them could absolutely put up massive numbers. $9,000 for Carl Williams. In hindsight, might be phenomenal price. I personally am going to leave that alone. Then we got Vitor Petrino. He's taking on Anton Turkalj. Vitor Petrino making his UFC debut. This guy is a beast. Just think Alex Pajeda. He looks in his fighting style, not his looks. I mean, he looks like a model. His fighting style, Alex Pajeda. He plots forward, blasts the legs, and has a wild, wild counter left hook. This guy is a killer striker. He's undefeated. He has six knockouts. The problem is we haven't really seen him in deep water. We haven't really seen him against a straight grappler. We're going to learn a lot in this fight. $8,200 though, 100% I like this dude in my lineup. With that being said, he's fighting Anton Turkalj. Anton Turkalj is better than his one UFC loss. He lost to Jolton Almeida. Jolton Almeida could be the heavyweight champion this year. This dude is a savage beast. So let's not worry about that loss. Anton Turkalj, he's a fun, athletic striker. He will mix it up on his feet. He has no problem taking risks. He's got a diverse striking style where he will spin. He will attack your legs. He'll attack your head. He can also wrestle. He had 11 takedowns in his contender series fight. And that's the one and only thing that worries me here. If he comes out wrestle heavy, I don't know what Vitor is going to look like. We don't have a lot of fights to go off of where he looks, you know, where he's just in a wrestling match. We don't. Because he's just taking people's heads off. So Vitor Pacino is going to put Anton Turkaj out or potentially defend takedowns after takedown after takedown that entire fight. I don't know. Pick your side. Whoever wins this fight is going to score a million points. Anton obviously could get a striking finish as well. It is bigger guys throwing leather. But Anton could get the 11 takedowns like he did on Contender Series and score huge. Or he can get knocked out flat. I am going to be on the Vitor side. $8,000. Anton Turkal is looking very, very good as well. 
Then we have Jonathan Martinez taking on Saeed Nurmagomedov. Jonathan Martinez only $7,100, and he is a phenomenal underdog at $7,100. He's a well-rounded guy. He's got technical striking, slick BJJ, nice Muay Thai striking style with nice leg kicks. He uses those to control range. He is not a bum. This The pricing is a bit wild. It's a little wide. I get it. Saeed Namagamadov is a beast, but so is Jonathan Martinez. Obviously, Cub Swanson was old, fine. But he smoked Morales, smoked Perez, smoked Lazishfili. And he's got a couple of losses in here, but not many. And they're to very decent opponents. Jonathan Martinez is the real deal. Puts up solid numbers in these decision wins. But if we're talking a $7,100 price point... These numbers are looking phenomenal. He's fighting Saeed Namagamadov. Don't let the last name fool you. He is a striker, not a wrestler. And you're going to see this win. Yes, round two. He submitted Kakramanov. But he was losing that fight. He was losing this fight. He was getting taken down, getting controlled, couldn't get his striking going, and he just sucked up a guillotine. He found his opportunity and sucked it up. I think Saeed wins because this dude just finds ways to freaking win. But if Jonathan Martinez follows the Hani Barsolos, follows the Kakramanov, if he follows those blueprints and wrestles heavy with his chin down, he could absolutely beat Saeed Namagamadov. I'm not going to spend the $9,100, but obviously this is a guy who finds ways to will win. Douglas Silva de Andrade is very good. He beat him. Cody Stamen, wrestler. He submitted him. Kakramanov, wrestler. He submitted him. This dude finds ways to win. Wins? I'm plurling words that shouldn't be plurled. He finds ways to win. And that's why he's going to be my pick here. But DraftKings wise, Jonathan Martinez is looking very good at $7,100. And we got Ricardo Ramos taking on Austin Lingo. I like Ricardo Ramos to win in this fight. I think he's the much better fighter. Austin Lingo is very, very tough, which makes this $9,500 a little tricky. But even in decisions... We're getting 98 points out of this guy. Eight takedowns in that Bill Algeo win. He's a dangerous fighter. He's good everywhere. Tall, rangy striker, slick BJJ. And obviously, he has those takedowns as well. I may spend that $9,500, him and Batista. But he's fighting Austin Lingo. Austin Lingo's a well-rounded guy. He's found himself in a nice two-fight win streak. This win over Luis Saldana was a very, very hard-fought win. He is a striker. He's light on his feet. He has power. He has speed, but he can be taken down. So if Ricardo Ramos is going to come in here, wrestle heavy, he should absolutely take away all those dangerous tools from Austin Lingo. We have not seen knockouts in the UFC yet, but look at this. Two knockdowns. He has a knockdown on each one of his UFC wins. Austin Lingo is very good. Ricardo Ramos is just better. And I may spend that $9,500. We have the rebooking of Nikita Krylov and Ryan Spann. If you remember, this was the main event two weeks ago. Nikita Krylov got sick, pulled out on fight night, and this has been rebooked as the feature fight. The analysis stays the same. Nikita Krylov is the more well-rounded fighter. He's got decent striking, a solid wrestling game plan, decent grappling as well. If he comes in with a wrestling game plan like he did against Volkan Ozdemir, he could put up some very real numbers, grind down Ryan Spann and get it done. This is a three-round fight, not a five. This is also at catch weight. This is at 215 pounds instead of 205 pounds. So I don't know what that means. Meaning, I don't know if the extra weight's going to help Ryan Spann. I imagine it would. I don't know if the shorter, you know, a three rounds instead of five is going to help Ryan Spann or hurt him. I imagine it helps him because he only has to, you know, he only has three rounds of cardio he has to worry about so he can come out swinging, but it may hurt him because Nikita Krylov only has to worry about his chin for three rounds, right? He doesn't have to be perfect for five. He has to be solid for three and not get hit. I still think Nikita Krylov wins this fight. Certainly, the cancellation and all these other things, the, the round difference, the weight difference, all of those things are now a factor, which has me less confident in Nikita Krylov than I was. I still think he can get his wrestling going. I still think he can get it done. Guys, you pick your side because I think the winner scores really well. If Ryan Spann wins, he's going to knock him out, period. I don't see Ryan Spann winning a decision. If Nikita Krylov wins, there's a lot of takedowns, a lot of control time. So pick your side. I'm going to be on the Krylov side. Price point's not terrible, but Ryan Spann at $7,500 at 215 pounds and only three rounds fighting a guy who was shitting his pants two weeks ago, that's not a bad price. 
I may do Ryan Spann in my lineup for that reason. Then we have the co-main event. We have Alexander Romanov taking on Alexander Volkov. Alexander Romanov, a beast wrestler. Two takedowns and a loss. Three, five, two, two. An absolute beast human being of a wrestler. In that first round, he is picking people up, slamming them down, absolutely beating the piss out of them. He did lose to Marcin Tybora. That was cardio at elevation. He slowed down. That first round was a mauling. He got the takedowns, throwing Tybora around like he was nothing. Absolutely not just throwing that dude around. They were at elevation. It was heavyweights. Tybora just kept coming. Alexander Romanov slowed down. Ended up losing a decision. A decision where he put up 51 points. Alexander Romanov should win this fight. But he is fighting Alexander Volkov. Alexander Volkov has been fighting top 10 heavyweights for a very long time. This dude is underrated. I know he's a name that we've seen a million times over, but he's got good technical striking. He's nice and long. He's got decent grappling. He does really, really well over the course of his career. He has done really well over the course of his career. His losses are to Aspinall, Cyril Gaon. You're going to see, I mean, Curtis Blades, and you're going to see Derek Lewis. The Derek Lewis, there was one second left in this fight. He was beating the shit out of Derek Lewis, got caught. But I think this loss looks like this. I think he's just taken down and beat on. I think Romanov will have success. Aspinall took him down twice and then submitted him. I don't know if Romanov is going to be able to submit him, but Romanov is going to be able to take him down. I like Romanov in here. I will probably have him in my lineup at that $8,600, which is, you know, it's nice to see under the 9000 mark. And then we have the main event, Pyotr Jan, Marab Divishvili. This is another tricky fight for DraftKings. Pyotr Jan, I think, wins this fight. Is he worth $9,200? I do not think so. Because Pyotr Jan, he's going to be the better striker. He's going to be the better jujitsu guy. Eh, maybe not. But he's definitely going to be the better striker. He's going to be the more well-rounded fighter. He has phenomenal takedown defense. Power. He's got great takedown offense as well. I mean, he took down Sean O'Malley six times. Took down Al Jermaine in their first fight seven times. You're going to say, okay, he's two and three in his last five. Well, this Sterling loss shouldn't be a loss. That was a knee. Fine, but he was beating the crap out of him ahead of that. This Sterling loss was a bad decision. And this Sean O'Malley loss was a bad decision. All of a sudden, he's 5-0 in his last five. This guy's a former champion. Very well-rounded. We watched him go through hell and back in the Sean O'Malley fight. We learned a lot of things about him there. But he is fighting Marab Devishvili. The problem with Marab, he's not going to be the better striker. Not even close. His jiu-jitsu's solid. It's not amazing. He's got good takedowns. Great control against the cage, miserable control on the ground. You don't get 13 takedowns in a fight if you can hold somebody down. If you can hold somebody down, you get three, maybe four. You're getting 13, you can't hold people down. And the problem here is Marab Devishvili could very easily just win this fight the same way he beat Jose Aldo. He can just hold Piotr Jan against the cage. I mean, I think he was 0 for 14 in takedown attempts, but it doesn't matter because... The judges were like, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of control time. Look at the control time. Five minutes. He landed some strikes. He just held him against the cage. Trying to get a takedown, didn't get it. Hold him against the cage. Trying to get a takedown, didn't get it. Hold him against the cage. I think Piotr Jan wins because what Aldo, where Aldo made the mistake was he played a defensive game. He was defending takedowns. He did it incredibly well, but he wasn't letting his hands go. He wasn't making Marab worry about what was waiting for him on his way in. I think Piotr Jan will do that. I think Piotr Jan will hit, will let his hands go, and will make Barab worry. The problem is, I, I'm not confident enough to spend the $9,200. Marab, pri- probably the higher upside here, $7,000. Even if he gets a couple of takedowns, a couple of minutes of control time, he'll cover that $7,000 nut. It's five rounds to work with, five rounds of nonstop wrestling pressure. He is a tough guy. He doesn't just get put away easily. I like Marab in DraftKings, even though I think Piotr probably wins the fight. So $7,000, probably a great price point, especially over the course of five rounds. Guys, we want picks.com. Check it out. It is only $10 a month. You're going to unlock everything. This fighter cheat sheet scorecard. The player pool rankings, we have ranked. If I click these tabs, I'm not going to show you. But if I click these tabs, you're going to see fighters ranked and broken out for your cash core lineup, your GPP core, any live dogs, the leverage picks, and our fades, who you should avoid based on price and skill. We're going to rank the fighters by by salary in the player pool. 
These are the fighters. You, you have a slot open. How much should I spend? Okay. And that's what you're going to do. Same exact content for FanDuel. And then obviously the DraftKings Optimizer, which is going to help you build lineups. You click a few buttons, you spit out 150 lineups. We want picks.com. It's $10 a month at the top. Just click become a member.